If you bully, you don't get bullied. So I was a bully in middle school. Hey guys, it's Kirby. Welcome back to Pretty Unfiltered. Today's guest is Christian Navarro, Tony in the house What's from up, 13 everyone? Reasons Why. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I really love the show and I love the conversation that the show sparked. So today we're going to be talking to Christian about his life, get to know him a little bit better. Also, we're going to be <laughs> talking about bullying in school, sexual assault, and then we're going to talk about maybe season two. Obviously, you probably don't know that much, but I'm hoping to... Get a little something, something. We'll see what it, we can divulge. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, let's just talk about the show. This was kind of your first big breakout role, right? Yeah. Um, how has the show affected you personally? Are you not able to do certain things you used to be able to do? No, I'm pretty much able to do everything I, I used to, uh, I want to do, but, uh, you know, people definitely know who I am now, and that's, the only thing that's changed is you feel the eyes on you. Yeah. You know? So it makes you a little bit more self-conscious, but I feel like, I've been waiting for this for a long time, so uh, it sounds odd to say, but I've been preparing for it, you know, so I'm, I'm ready. Hard work ready. pays off. Yeah, hard work definitely pays off. Let's talk about teenage Christian. Okay. Did you deal with, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, we're going to go back and talk about this. Were you affected by bullying at all growing up? Did you have a pretty normal childhood, or would you say that you suffered from some of the things that happened in this, this show? Okay, I'm going to give you the scoop, all right? Please do. I, I, it's no secret now, especially in light of the MTV Awards, that I'm not the tallest guy. So growing up, I was bullied. As a, in middle school, I was bullied. But I learned pretty quickly that uh, if you bully, you don't get bullied. So I was a bully in middle school. Wow. Um, but then I got to high school and kind of cut all that nonsense out. What changed for you, though? What made you think, okay, I can't keep doing this? Uh, people didn't like me, <laughs> right? I mean, if you're a jerk, people don't like you. And uh, I, I want, we all want to belong to a community. And so I figured the best way to do that was to stop being a jerk, be nice, and listen to people and empathetic, and uh, it's worked out pretty well for me so far. There's a discussion happening now, which I think needed to happen for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, 13 Reasons Why covers bullying, sexual assault, and teenage suicide in a very honest man matter and manner. And, um, but there is some controversy, obviously, as expected. I know that Dylan, Selena, Ross have all kind of discussed this, but what are your thoughts on the controversy of the show? Maybe. Um, what, what would you say in response to people saying the, the suicide scene was a little too graphic? Hmm. I did an interview recently with this, the woman interviewing me, she said, you know what, I, I understood the controversy until I watched the show with my child. And I thought, what a perfect rebuttal to the, to the blowback. That's what we made it for, for people to talk about it. And if that scene particularly forces people to really broach that conversation and talk to their kids and figure out where their kid's at uh, in high school and mentally and how they're dealing with their friendships and what's going on. So. You know, there's that old saying, no press is bad press. I think that's particularly true with this. If people are talking about it still, it's, I don't know, how long has the show been on? A month and yeah. change? People are still talking about that, and, and uh, it's more and more conversations are being generated as time passes. I think we've done our job. Totally. Um, so, you know, I respect everyone's opinion. I think it's valid. I, I obviously understand wanting to protect your children. Um, that comes from a very genuine place. I think I would offer up, uh, maybe explore a dialogue with them instead of, shading them from everything. They live in the 21st century and it's real and uh, they're going through this stuff. So maybe try and open up a little bit and talk to them, see what they have to say. Did you experience any tolls when playing this role? Was there anything that was very taxing to you that you went home and you're like, man, I don't know how to get out of this? I think everyone in the show had to deal with that to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Dylan and Catherine and Alicia yep. uh, have to deal with it the most. They really had to shake off the stuff when they weren't on set because they're dealing with such heavy content. Um, what I had to deal with was being there for Catherine and, and, and Clay, uh, Dylan, Dylan and uh, Catherine. Because my job, my job in the show is really to support Clay and make sure he makes it through the tapes without making the same decision Catherine Hannah made. So uh, I had to get home every day and really think about the weight of Clay's journey. Mm -hmm. uh, so a little bit, but I, really I was there to support everyone else. So that was my role in the show and I'm very happy and proud to be able to do that. What would you say the hardest scene was uh, for you to shoot? Clay's tape, I think it's episode 11. Yep. Uh, I mean, that was just brutal. That Because again, Clay Dillon is such an incredible actor and he's given his whole heart on this performance. And most of that episode was just Christian, the actor, saying, I gotta be there for this guy while he's pouring his heart out for us. And it translates really well because he and I have great chemistry. We're really good friends and that char those characters needed that, so. And one scene in episode 13, the second scene I had with, with Catherine, with Hannah, where I was hand yeah. her the tape recorder because the, uh, the weight of that moment didn't really hit me until we were filming. That, you know, it's, it's me giving her the final piece of her puzzle. Uh, and so that's even 
after the show has come out, that's something I've really did a lot of thinking about. And a lot of people like to say Tony isn't culpable, but that's a that's a very uh, important moment where he is in fact culpable. And uh, I've done a lot of thinking about that. So those two things are probably the hardest things I had to film. And driving, because I didn't drive. I'd never driven before. <laughs> so oh yeah, because you're from the Bronx, right? Yeah. You grew up in New York. Take so the train you... everywhere. So you had to get a license for this? I landed, uh, they took me to a driving lesson, and I said, you guys made a mistake here. <laughs> uh, but they were very generous, and they really wanted me for the role, so they, they got me driving lessons, and I got my license, and uh, <laughs> now I'm a licensed California driver. Nice! Much to my dad's horror. Okay, I do want to talk about Selena. Let's talk about Selena. What was it like working with her on this? I've, I've been saying the same thing for a couple months now, because she's got that song, Kill Him With Kindness, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's. It, it sounds cliche, but it's not a song. She is one of the kindest, sweetest, most compassionate people I've ever had the privilege of meeting in or out of the business. And she's very uh, giving. She wants to give her knowledge and her, you know, how she treats the fans and how she deals with press and everything. She's just very giving. And her and her mother, Mandy Teefee, uh, who's also an executive producer on the show, they've just been inc incredibly kind. A year and a half ago, I was watching, literally, I was sitting with my baby sister, Madison, mm -hmm. I was watching her on the show, and I remember thinking, wow, she's awesome, I'd love to meet her. And I was sitting next to her at dinner a couple months later, you know, a year later, and um, she's just, some people you meet and they don't live up to the expectation, she exceeded it by leaps and bounds. She's That's an incredible awesome. person. Thank you, Selena, for having me. That's so great to hear. <laughs> Let's talk about your personal life. Okay. Here we go, are you ready? No, but I ain't, I ain't ever ready, so let's do it. All right, you said you have a baby sister. Yep. Only sibling? No, I have three younger sisters and an older brother. What piece of advice have they given you in terms of <laughs> your career now that 13 Reasons Why has come out? Anything lately that has you kind of- You mean after the show's release? Yes. My father has always preached to me from, from day one, stay humble, be humble, treat people with kindness. Uh, it'll get you farther than, than everything else and work harder than everyone else in the room. And uh, those bits of advice have really molded me into becoming who I am. I mean, I basically am my father, but uh, he's the greatest guy I know, so I, I don't mind being his mini-me. Definitely that, stay humble and treat people with kindness, because you never know, like our show, you never know what someone's going through, and uh, I learned that working on the show and definitely from my father. Okay, you don't have to answer this, but you're off the market, right? You have a girlfriend. No, I'm single. Oh, damn, all right, I have some, I have some wrong information here. Is this the here. exclusive? She and I separated a couple months ago and I'm single and uh, doing my thing. Okay, can you can you tell me your celebrity crush, anyone? <laughs> uh, I got two, right? Uh, I only had one until Sunday night at the MTV Awards. Uh, Paige Van Zandt, I'm a big mixed martial, art, uh, martial artist my whole life and a huge fan of mixed martial arts. And uh, Paige Van Zandt is absolutely my celebrity crush. But <laughs> I was sitting 20 feet away from Haley Steinfeld, and she got on that stage and she looked phenomenal. Haley, if you're watching, you look phenomenal. You're my celebrity crush. That's adorable. Thank you. Do you think that season two will be through Hannah's eyes still, or do you think it will shift to somebody else? I think, and I would like to see personally, an exploration of maybe some of the events from season one uh, through the perspectives of the characters who we don't get to see. Because there's two sides to those tapes. There's Hannah's perspective. And I think Tony says to Clay at one point in the car that it doesn't matter if it's, that's her truth. It doesn't matter what your truth is. We're, we're here dealing with her truth. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was very important for season one. Season two, I think we'll see a little bit more exploration of the other characters' perspectives on these events and then the ongoing events, the, the trial. I think it will have a lot to do with retribution and justice is, is really the word that everyone keeps throwing out there, justice for Jessica because... Uh, yeah. I think it would be a shame if we didn't tie that up somehow. Uh, second season, third season, wherever down the road. Yeah. Uh, knock on wood if we're lucky. Get some get some answers there. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you what you think is going to transpire with these characters, whether it's right or wrong. I just would love to hear your your ideas. So, mm. Alex, when we last heard from him, you know, he was I got no idea in the hospital. Yeah, I didn't know really what to, what that what actually happened. We had the table read. I saw the show. I'm just as curious as everyone else about Alex Stendhal. All right, Jessica, you kind of touched on this, though. I really want uh, some justice for Jessica. I want to see her make the decision to prosecute uh, Bryce and maybe see where that goes. Uh, what about Tyler? He's got a trunk full of guns. That's all I'll say about that. I have no idea what, what's going to happen. That was him. also just as shocking to me as the Alex news. Yeah. Because when you see that, you don't expect it. You, you just think he's, you know, a photographer, and you obviously right. know his side of this, not his side, but what he, his transgressions against Hannah. And they're all very, I mean, the, the actions that they took against Hannah were deplorable. 
that same group treats him deplorably exactly. as well. I mean, it's it's tragic. So uh, it's like a great mystery novel. We, we got a lot of threads in the air, so I don't know what's going to happen with him. What would you want to see happen to Bryce if you had it your way, if you could write the show? I think Bryce needs to go to jail. I think that's the only true justice. Uh, we can't really get justice for Hannah because she's not with us anymore. So it's got to be because of Jessica. And uh, I hope we see Jessica decide to prosecute him and, and he goes down fair and square. Christian, what can we expect from you this year? Anything else coming up? Well, when do you guys start filming? Uh, Mid-June, end of June, I think we start filming. Okay. Everyone knows now we're coming back for a season two. Yay. Uh, so we'll be doing that for six months or so. And mm -hmm. then I filmed a movie uh, in hiatus with Melissa McCarthy and Richard Grant called How Could You Ever Forgive Me? And that's really exciting. It's going to be a really cool movie. I'm excited to be. I'm excited to be a part of that. And I have a film coming out this year called uh, in this summer called Bushwick. They just announced August 25th. We got pumped up with Dave Bautista, who's the freaking man. Go see Guardians if you haven't seen it. He's awesome. Congratulations and all the success. Thank you. Thank you. Glad that you guys are bringing this to the forefront of everybody's minds, and we're getting this discussion going. Yeah. Guys, what did you love about this interview? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, guest ideas and topics you want us to cover. This show was totally about you. So we listen and we try to get your favorites on the show. I know you guys are psyched that Christian's here because I got a ton of tweets about it. Oh. Uh, so subscribe to Pop Sugar Girls Guide. We have a new episode every Wednesday and we'll see you next time. Bye.